Hey guys, so about a month ago, I learned about a brand new pasta shape invented right here in the US. I of course immediately ordered some and then I found out that they're back ordered by several months. So I thought it'd be quite a while before I saw my pasta. However, one of our viewers, Chow Mark, sent me a box and boy am I grateful. I am now the proud owner of a box of Cascatelli pasta, a brand new pasta shape. Uh, it says that Cascatelli means waterfalls, which I guess makes sense because it kind of looks like little waterfalls. They make some pretty bold claims about the capabilities of this pasta, but to see if they're true, I think I should introduce this to my Italian wife, Ava, who is rather opinionated about her pasta. Ah, why I'm like that? We're gonna play a little game. I don't like your game, Arper. <laughs> Maybe until now you didn't understand, but I don't like them. The game is called Guess the Shape of Pasta. So I'm gonna give you a piece of pasta, and just by feel alone, you have to see if you can guess what shape it is. Because do you have any doubt that I can't recognize the pasta? Oh, I'm sure you'll do great. Okay, here's the first one. Hold your hands out. Penna rigata. Ah, oh, you got it. Penna rigata. Easy. Let's try a harder one. But what's the goal of this game? I just want to see how well you can guess uh, different pasta. Okay. But it's too go. easy. Farfalle rigate da un lato, from a side, and from the other side they are smooth, uh, lisce. So it's like a farfalla. All right. Well done. Easy. So you need a, more of a challenge here, I think. Every Italian can touch the pass and say which one it is. Okay. Well, in that case, touch this one. Yeah. <laughs> what is this, Harper? You don't know? Yeah. It is a pasta. It is a pasta. Is there a pasta you've never heard of? Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, yes, because it's like... Okay, you can take your mask off. Oh. What is that? That is Cascatelli, a new pasta shape. <laughs> From the mind of James Beard Award winner Dan Pashman, creator and host of the Sporkful Food Podcast, comes Cascatelli, Italian for waterfalls. No, sorry. Cascatelli. Doesn't it mean waterfalls? Uh, no, cascata means waterfall in Italy. <laughs> no, cascatelli. Okay, well. <laughs> but don't worry, Harper, it's like I know. Linguine, linguini, fettuccine, fettuccini, cascatelle, maybe cascatelli. It's an American tradition. It's an American tradition. Put an tradition. E on the end. <laughs> cascatelli is designed to maximize the three qualities by which Dan believes all pasta shapes should be judged. Those are sauceability, how readily sauce adheres to the shape, forkability, how easy it is to get the shape on your fork and keep it there, and tooth sinkability, how satisfying it is to sink your teeth into it. What do you think of it, though? How does it look no, to you? No, it doesn't look bad. It's like, uh, it seems to be bronze cut, which means that it should be at least a good quality of pasta. No, it's cool, Harper, because if you take two, two pieces together, <laughs> it's an hard. <laughs> so it's like, we love pasta. <laughs> so it's not bad. It's uh, hundreds of years that we eat pasta and we need to wait, uh, Sir, what's his name? Uh, Dan Pashman. Okay, Sir Dan Pashman, who had to invent this pasta that he seems to be the best pasta in the world. Well, so that's the thing. 
their marketing and their packaging really seems to sell this as being the perfect pasta for every purpose, for every sauce, for every dish. It's just the perfect pasta. That's kind of what they're selling it as. Now, I've learned in my time with you that every pasta has a sauce that it kind of works best with. It has a specific, uh, what would you call it? Specialization, I guess you could say. It's not that any pasta won't work in general with most sauces, but some work better. And those uses for each pasta really developed over like, you know, hundreds of years of traditions evolving in Italy and settling upon which sauces go best with which pasta. This pasta has no such traditions. There aren't hundreds of years of history behind it. So do you want me to discover what's the best sauce for this pasta? That's what I'm hoping. And we only have one box, so you've got like four chances at it. I can be a pioneer of pasta in America. You can, you can create a, the new traditional preparation of Cascatelli pasta. Okay, Harper, uh, challenge accepted. Let's improve this new shape of pasta, Cascatelli, Cascatelli, <laughs> whatever it is. <laughs> In order to understand what can be the, be the best sauce for this pasta, I need to start from the basics so I can understand uh, which kind of thickness, uh, liquidity, <laughs> texture can be right for the new cascatelli. So the first test will be the most iconic Italian sauce, uh, that is uh, Simple tomato sauce. So here there is written, uh, cook 13, 17 uh, minutes. Now, there are four minutes of difference between uh, 13 and 17. Usually on the Italian box you find al dente, 10 minutes, uh, cooked normally, maybe 11, 12 minutes, but guys, four minutes of difference makes it's a huge difference. So, when it will be 13 minutes, I will check the pasta and see if it's uh, al dente or not. But do we have two spaghetti? Because with this tomato sauce, uh, now I'm craving two... Two spaghetti, two spaghetti. It is eight minutes that is cooking, so I, I want to try it. You need another two minutes to be al dente. So 30 minutes is too much, it's overcooked. 10 minutes, I suggest to the Spollini company to change, so 10 minutes is the right time. very first plate of cascatelli pasta. My experience uh, was that uh, the number of the on the box uh, are wrong. <laughs> because I cooked, I cooked this pasta for uh, less than 10 minutes. Because when I tried it, uh, I understood that uh, biting, uh, that the age, uh, they were uh, pretty cooked. Uh, the inside was still uh, no raw, but we 
say it's like he needed the, like another minutes, another minutes, and an half. So. Oh, so you mean because the shape is so irregular, different parts of the pasta cook, cook at different, different times. Time. So, it makes sense because they're kind of different thicknesses. Visually, I can say that in my opinion, it's stick too much. It is too. What does that mean? Italians, you understand, is like uh, mappazzone all together. <laughs> so the forkability, how it is? Pretty easy to get on the fork. Like a penne, like a fusillo, like a farfalla, <laughs> like a spaghetti. Buon appetito. Buon appetito. So what do you think? Do you think? <laughs> okay, I thought that it actually wouldn't hold the tomato sauce very well, because while it has a lot of um, sort of ridges and contours, it doesn't have a lot of the very like fine lines and ribbing that normally you find in pasta that's meant to hold a rather liquid tomato sauce. Mm -hmm. Or like spaghetti, for instance, when, when it's served together, it creates all those crevices and holes that soak up sauce like a sponge. So I thought because it was a bigger pasta and smoother, it wouldn't hold the, the tomato sauce very well. But like that, that ridge in there is holding a ton of sauce. See, it's uh, every cascatello keep uh, the sauce. So it's like, uh, this is okay. I don't know if you can taste what I was saying before, the difference of uh, oh. cooking of the different part. Yeah, the frilly edges sort of melt right away in your mouth and then the inside has kind of more of a bite to it. But anyway, it's not bad. Yeah, I like it. With the tomato sauce, it's not bad. Yeah. But let's say how good is a plate of spaghetti with tomato sauce. <laughs> Nothing else in the world, so. The test of tomato sauce uh, is okay, but we still have something that works better with the tomato sauce. Well, maybe this pasta, I mean, it seems to work pretty well with tomato sauce, but maybe there's something it's better at. And we are here to discover. We tried it with the tomato sauce and it worked pretty good. If you have a tomato sauce in the fridge and you want to use it, it can be a good pair. But I want to give another chance to the cascatelli pasta and I'm going to do the second test with a cheese based sauce which means that I'm going to use my beloved ricotta cheese. Classic plate of cascatelli, induia, and ricotta. Cascatelli Calabrian style. Something tells me the people at Sfolini have not been testing their cascatelli with induia. You may be the first person in history to put induia on cascatelli. I'm a pioneer writing the next, next chapter of the pasta book, <laughs> as there is written on the box of cascatelli, so. It looks once again, like it's doing a very good job of holding the sauce, maybe even better than the tomatoes. I mean, there's so much sauce on it that you can't see the pasta. You can just see pasta shaped sauce. Well, let's try it. Let's try it. Buon appetito. Buon appetito. Oh, do you in ricotta. So good. Maybe Mr. Pashman, we found we find uh, the right uh, sauce for your new pasta because cascatelli in due ricotta it's unbelievable good it holds it really really well it's perfect really well i don't want to speak too soon though because you still have 
several other chances to try stuff, but Let this definitely think. seems like a winner. I, I can't quite put my finger on why, but for some reason with this sauce, I feel like I'm, how do I say it? I, I feel the shape of the pasta in my mouth better. Does that make sense? With which sauce? With this sauce. Eh, because the combination, Arper, uh, the combination, uh, the two elements together, because it's a very creamy sauce with the ricotta that is um, thick uh, enough, but it doesn't create a mappazzone. It creates yeah. a smooth taste in your mouth, and it's like, it's, the combina it's all about the combination. Yeah, because I feel like I can feel the individual pieces of the pasta better than tomato with the tomato sauce. sauce, yeah. This worked pretty darn well, but there could be a sauce out there that's even better. We had the tomato sauce Harper and we discovered that, uh, yes, it works, but not so well. Then we made with the ricotta and yeah, and we discovered that the level is pretty high. And then uh, for my first test, uh, I chose the a dish, a, a sauce that this time is from the north of Italy, and it's a pretty famous sauce. <laughs> Our uh, third test for uh, the new cascatelli is uh, uh, pesto. So I'm going to do the pesto today, but I know from now that I'm going to do it uh, in the wrong way. Which means to make the real pesto genovese, you need the, the first thing, the, how do you say, mortaio. Okay, perfect. And uh, I couldn't find it, so I'm going to do my, the pesto with uh, a blender. And this is not correct. One thing that it's very important when uh, we do pesto alla genovese is uh, to not uh, heat, uh, to not uh, warm up, uh, I don't know, to not cook uh, our basil. So what we are going to do is to use uh, the pulse function of our um, blender. So don't leave the blender, and, uh, the blender just running because you will destroy your pesto alla genovese. How do you think it looks? It smells very good. It smells very good. It doesn't uh, look bad. So it's like the pesto is inside the very part yeah. of the pasta. It's definitely so holding it's... it pretty well, although I don't think quite as well as the other sauces. So Harper, bon appetito. Bon appetito. It definitely doesn't work quite as well as the ricotta, which just really... <laughs> In my opinion, with the pesto, or with a sauce like pesto, mm -hmm. you can still taste the shape of pasta like the ricotta. Mm -hmm. While with the tomato sauce was all uh, too much in the mouth for me, mm. and not for you. Mm. But even if I love pesto, cascatelli is with ricotta cheese <laughs> they are with ricotta cheese well we tried a tomato based sauce yes. a cheese based sauce and an oil based sauce i think we're both in agreement that it seemed like the cheese based sauce worked by far the best with the cascatelli we have one more serving of cascatelli that you can possibly make using the information that we've gathered do you think you can lay down 
a new cascatelli recipe. I can uh, try. I try to do my best. So yes. and whatever you submit will forever be the cascatelli recipe, the originale. Tradizionale. Tradizionale. Tipico di Arizona. What should we call it? Alper, I don't know. Before we need to try and uh, see if we can give a name to this dish because if it's That's not true. good... <laughs> That's true. Buon appetito. Buon appetito. Yeah, I think that's worth naming. I think that it needs a name, see? I love that the you've added the cherry tomatoes, which are perfectly sized to fit in the curve of the pasta. And like here, uh, the eggplants you've cut into these little spears and they're perfectly sized to fit into the outer ridge of the pasta. I try to respect the product. I really like the cherry tomato like this that we call uh, pomodorini confit because mm -hmm. they give this sweetness mm -hmm. to the pasta that it's amazing. Yeah, it's super good. I'm sure that Cascatelli has a long history ahead of it but I think this is a pretty good start. Our humble submission into the evolving tradition of this new pasta. So you're telling me that right now we wrote a page on the next chapter of pasta. What I'm telling you is that cascatelli is made for this sauce. It can only go with this sauce. And it is a sin if you use any, I'm kidding. But it is a good sauce for this pasta. It's a very good sauce because the ricotta is made for cascatelli, or maybe better, cascatelli are made for the ricotta. <laughs> so we need to find a name. We do need a name. If you guys have any ideas, uh, leave a comment below. We'll put a link also to uh, the Cascatelli store where you can buy your own. Uh, we have no affiliation with them, but it'll be down there. They are back ordered significantly right now, so you might have to wait a while. Um, but if you do get your hands on some cascatelli and you try this recipe or you try any recipes, we would love to hear from you. Tag us on Instagram or Facebook at Pasta Grammar. We'd love to see what you guys think works best with it. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and we will see you next time. Ciao! Bye.